Understanding polynomial behavior. The highest order term, H-O-T, hot. I like that one. The highest order term is the term with the greatest exponent. The number in front of this term is called the leading coefficient. The highest order term has so much power. It determines the end behavior and the degree of the polynomial. Hmm, I know what the degree is, but what's end behavior? Oh, oh, good book here. Um, do you ever read a book and wonder if it's going to end like happy or sad, positive or negative? Oh, this one ends happy, it's positive. Oh my gosh. And that's just how polynomials behave. So polynomial end behavior, well then that just means what happens when X's are getting really, really, really big? What are the outputs doing? Are they getting really big or are they getting really small? What happens when the X's get really, really, really small? Are they getting really big? Are the outputs that is, or the outputs getting really small? So it is not talking whatsoever about the middle or the interior of the polynomial. It just means as X's get really big or really small, what are the outputs doing? How does the sign of the leading coefficient affect end behavior? Well, remember when I was reading my book and I wanted to flip to the end and determine if it ended positive or negative, happy or sad, that's what the sign of the leading coefficient does for our polynomial end behavior. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the end of the end behavior ends up. And if the leading coefficient is negative, then the end of the end behavior ends down. Let's take a look at what we mean by this. Let's apply this to lines. So what is the end behavior of the line in example A? Let's correlate it to the end of our story. How did our story end? Is the leading coefficient positive or negative? It's positive. Therefore, how does this story end? It ends up, it ends positive. Yay! Alrighty, next, how did it begin though? What was the end behavior when X's were really, really, really small? It started the opposite. So it's like the story started sad, but it ends happy. You might be saying, what? Well, let's look at what degree this is. This is degree one. One is an odd number. Whenever it's odd, it's going to do the opposite for end behavior. Hmm, just stick with me, let's keep going. Example B, how does this story end? Well, is the leading coefficient positive or negative? It's negative, so the story ends down. But then, what degree is it? Is the degree even or odd? Well, the degree is one, and that's odd, so it means that it starts opposite. So if it ends down, it must have started up. Yeah, once we understand this, the leading coefficient is true no matter what degree the polynomial is. And then if it's an odd degree, we always have opposite end behavior, right? If you think about lines, they either go up, down, or down, up, and that's true of any odd degree polynomial. Let's take a look at C and D. First things first, let's see how the story ends. Well, this one is negative, so the story is going to end down. It's a bad ending. What does that mean about how it started? The degree is three. Three is odd, so that means opposite. So if the story ended down, it had to start up. If it starts up, then that means the outputs are going towards infinity. And then it ends down, so what are the outputs doing? The outputs are going towards negative infinity. Example D, let's go through it. What's the sign of the leading coefficient? It is positive. If it's positive, it means the end of the story ended up. Yay! Okay, if it ended up, how did it start? Well, what's the degree of the polynomial? It's a seven. Seven is odd, odd is opposite. So if it ended up, it started down. Okay. So if it started down, that means the outputs were going towards negative infinity, ended up, they're going towards positive infinity. Let's verify by taking a look at the graphs. It worked! Even polynomials, well, we already know about that as well because quadratics, parabolas. What is the end behavior of a parabola? Well, it's either up, up or down, down. Even degree polynomials start and end the same. How does the story end? Well, it's a positive three, so it means that the story ended up. 
And then how do I figure out whether it's going to be an up up? I know we have the graph here, but think about if we did not. Because the leading coefficient was positive, it ends up and because the degree was even, it means it does the same, so it starts up. So as the x's get really, really small, what are the outputs doing? They're going up, so they're going towards infinity. As the x's get really, really big, what are the outputs doing? They're also going up. So we have infinity, infinity for our end behavior, up, up. Next, we see a parabola with a negative leading coefficient. If it has a negative leading coefficient, remember that tells the end of the story. So it means that it ended down or ended with the outputs going towards negative infinity. Because it's an even degree polynomial, it starts the same. So our end behavior is negative infinity and negative infinity. On both ends of our graph, the outputs are going to negative infinity. If we understand our quadratics, then we understand the end behavior of all even degree polynomials. Let's look at G and H. On G, the sign of the leading coefficient is negative. Remember, that's how the story ends. So we end down because it's negative. Alrighty, how does it start? Well, because it's an even degree polynomial, then it will start the same. So it's a down, down. H, the sign of the leading coefficient, positive, therefore it ends up, and the degree is six, six is even, so it starts the exact same as it ends. So if it's ending up, it's going to start up. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the middle, but the ends are still up, up. Let's verify this graphically. Yep, it worked. Let's practice this. Determine the end behavior. 5x cubed minus 2x plus 7. Okay, so I look for the leading coefficient's sign. It's positive, so I know it ends positive. Then the degree is odd, so odd opposite. So it means it starts opposite, so down. So my end behavior is going to be down up. So as my x's get really, really small, my outputs get small. So they're headed towards negative infinity. As x's get really, really large, my outputs get really large and head towards positive infinity. Okay, so the next one, my leading coefficient is negative. So that means my end behavior is down, so headed towards the negative direction. And then my degree is 6. So that is an even number, so even same. So I start the way I ended, down. So it's kind of like a parabola, down, down. On the next one, I have a positive leading coefficient. So I know my end behavior is gonna be up, so headed towards positive infinity. And I have an even degree because it's a degree of four. So they're gonna be the same, up, up, infinity, infinity. So graphically, we can see that both ends of my graph head towards positive infinity. Number four, the leading coefficient is negative. So if I have a negative leading coefficient and an odd degree, my graph starts towards positive infinity and ends towards negative infinity. Pause, try the next four, five through eight. Oh, how did you do? Let's check really quick. I'm getting sore from all that polynomial dancing. Let's look at max number of x-intercepts. Well, remember x-intercepts is a synonym for solutions, roots, zeros. Well, we already learned a little bit about how many solutions any given polynomial could have with the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? So if we have a quadratic, our degree is two, so we'd have at most two x-intercepts. If we have a cubic, our degree is three, so we'd have at most three x-intercepts. Now, you're, you're gonna hear me say at most here, right? Because remember when we had quadratics, we had like three different possibilities, right? We had one where we had a quadratic intersect in two places, so we had two x-intercepts. Then we had another quadratic where it only touched our x-axis in one spot, so we only had one x-intercept, right? Well, what that means is we have a solution with a multiplicity two. We'll talk more about that later. Then we had another one that was like floating above the x-axis, so it had no real solutions, right? So it didn't have any x-intercepts, but it did have two imaginary solutions. So that's what I'm talking about here. When I say the max number of x-intercepts, I'm saying how many times is that graph gonna cross or touch my x-axis? So max number of x-intercepts is at most equal to the degree. So now that we're graphing polynomials, they turn a whole heap ton of times sometimes, or sometimes they don't turn at all. So turning points where the graph changes direction is at most one less than the degree. So think about it. When we had a quadratic, our degree was two. Quadratics look like those nice little parabolas. So how many times do they change directions? One time. So one less than the degree. 
So what that means is an odd degreed function has an even number of turning points. So like a cubic could have two turning points or could have zero turning points. So an even degreed polynomial has an odd number of turning points. So let's try quartic. That's x to the fourth power. Okay, so it has at most how many x-intercepts equal, so four, and at most how many turning points? One less than the degree. So three. Does it mean I'm guaranteed four x-intercepts and three turning points? No, at most. We already know about y-intercepts, but to emphasize, the y-intercept is where it intersects the y-axis. Therefore, the x-coordinate of my y-intercept is always zero. Is it possible for a function to have more than one y-intercept? Well, let's look. Zero, two, and zero, negative one. Does this pass the vertical line test for a function? The key word there was function. So no, you can only have one y-intercept for a function. Pulling it all together, let's see how much we can tell about this polynomial. We've got y equals 7x minus 1 plus 6x cubed. Well, first let's get it in standard form. Greatest exponent to least exponent. Now I'm going to name this using the degree and number of terms. Well, what's the degree? Look for that highest ordered term, right? 6x cubed. So this is a cubic because my degree is 3. How many terms do I have? 1, 2, 3. So I have three terms. That's a trinomial. So I have a cubic trinomial. Highest order terms, what I'm being asked for next. I already identified that. That's 6x cubed. Whew. Okay, now time to apply my new skills. End behavior. Okay, I gotta remember. End behavior. I look for the sign of the leading coefficient. So mine is positive. So I'm gonna end positive. I'm gonna end up going towards positive infinity. The degree is three, so that's odd. Odd opposite. So I'm gonna start the opposite, so negative infinity. Max number of x-intercepts. How many x-intercepts could I have? Three. Why three? because it's equal to my degree. So I could have at most three x-intercepts. Max number of turning points, one less than the degree. So I could have at most two turning points. What's my y-intercept? Well, how do I find that? No matter what form I'm in, I can just plug in zero for x. So I'm gonna get zero, negative one for my y-intercept. Wow, look at all that I can tell about a polynomial just from its standard form. Take a moment to try the next one. Make sure you're starting this next one off correct. Check your standard form before you keep going. Check and see if you got what I got. Whoa, we're in factored form here. We have to get to standard form. Let's multiply our binomials, and then once that's simplified, we will distribute the monomial throughout. Now that it's in standard form, finish the characteristics. Check your answers. How did you do? I wonder how this story ends.